In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can create a nifty little notification pop-up like this. It's really simple to do using a combination of generate press elements, generate blocks, and just a couple snippets of CSS and JavaScript, which of course I'll provide for you down in the video description below. This is a really great way to display notifications on your website and catch the user's attention, and it really couldn't be simpler to do. So if that sounds like something that'd be helpful for you to have inside of your tool bag, stick around and let's take a look at how it's done. Okay, so our first step here is gonna to be to create an element that we're gonna use for our pop-up banner. So I'm gonna go into the element section and add a new element. We'll choose a block element and hit create. We can call this notification banner. All right, so inside of here, I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a container and I do wanna control the sizing here. So I'm gonna say it's 100% width, but we wanna max this out at 480 pixels. So that will just make sure it doesn't take up the whole screen there. Now we can go ahead and give this a bit of styling. We'll give it some border radius, maybe 16 pixels. We'll give it a border and now you'll be able to see it on the screen there. We want to position it all the way at the bottom right. So what I'm gonna do is have the left margin of auto and then I'm gonna give the right and the bottom about 16 pixels of margin just so it's not trapped all the way in the corner. And then we can go ahead and give it some padding here. Now, as far as the styling, I wanna go just slightly lighter on the background and we'll give it an orange border. Now we can go ahead and set up the content that's gonna go inside. We'll do a heading and I'm just gonna make it a paragraph and we'll type in attention and we can style this up a little bit. Maybe we make this a little bit bigger. We give it a bold font and let's go ahead and change the color to white so we have plenty of contrast. Now we wanna go ahead and give this an icon. We'll just give it this star since it's already here inside of our icons. And we can change the icon color to that orange color to match. Now underneath that, we wanna do another headline block, change it to paragraph, and I'm just gonna drop in some website ipsum here. But we do wanna line up this text with this text here. Now this is gonna be a little magic numbery, but we can just give it some left margin, maybe 32. And that's pretty close. Let me get rid of the bottom margin on this headline. Instead of 24, which is my default, I'll change it to four. And you can see we've actually lined up pretty good. Now we do have some extra margin at the bottom of this here. So I'm gonna go ahead and zero that out. And we'll take a look. This looks pretty good for a notification banner. Now the last thing we need inside of here is a button that's actually gonna be used as the close button. So I'm gonna go in here and just underneath, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a button. We're gonna end up positioning this using CSS, so it doesn't really matter where we put it in here, but in order of all the DOM elements, I probably want it at the bottom. We'll go ahead and style this up. We're gonna do four pixels of padding all the way around it. We'll change the border radius to four. Here for the background, I'm gonna say it's absolutely clear for the background. And on hover, we're gonna go with just a really light white color. For the text, We'll give it kind of a medium gray and on hover, we'll make it white so we can kind of see how that's working. Now, of course, we don't want to have text in here. We actually want a X for the close button and we can actually fake that here. We don't have a close button, but we do have this plus and we can make it work. So I'll show you that little trick as well. Also in this icon setting, we want to remove the text. So we have just the close button and to get that to actually be styled like a close button, we're going to use the effects transform. We're going to add a transformation and it's going to be rotate. And we just want to rotate the icon. So we'll change the target to icon and we can change it to 45. So now we can see this looks like a nice little close button. Now we just need to give a few elements some classes so we can control everything with CSS that we need to. First is this button. I'm going to scroll down here to advanced and under additional CSS classes, I'm going to call this close btn. And the next one is the actual banner itself. So we'll just scroll down here and give it a class of banner. Now, lastly, before we can save this element, we have to set up the display rules and where this element is gonna live. So inside the elements tab, I'm gonna leave this element type on hook and I'm gonna change the hook name to before footer just so it's kind of at the bottom of the page. And we're gonna change the location to entire site. Obviously, if you only wanted this to show up on certain pages, you have all those display rules here to play with. But for now, we'll go ahead and publish this and we'll go take a look at it on the front end. So now we'll have to scroll down all the way here to before the footer to see this. 
Obviously that's not where we want it. We want to have this sticky on the page and we're gonna to have to write some CSS to do that. But other than that, this all looks correct. Uh, obviously we need to move the close button as well. So to do that, I'm gonna actually jump here into the customizer and we're gonna write just a little bit of CSS. The first one is gonna be for the banner. So we gave that a class of banner and we wanna change the position to fixed. We also need to give this some coordinates. So I'm gonna to say to the bottom is zero pixels and to the right is zero pixels. And we can see that that puts it right here in this corner. And because we put some margin on this banner itself, it's actually not going directly into the corner. We have a little bit of room around it, which is what we want. Now we need to go ahead and position the close button, which we gave the class close BTN. And for that, I'm gonna say the position is absolute. Now, because we changed the position here on the banner to fixed, it's now relative, this absolute is now relative to that banner. And we're gonna say the top is maybe 12 pixels and the right is 12 pixels. And that should position it right here up in the corner, which is exactly what we want. So now we can go ahead and save this. We'll close out of the customizer and refresh this page. And now we can see it's positioned exactly how we want it. It's sticky to the bottom right corner and it has the close button in the position we need. Of course, there's a couple things that are not working about this. First, the close button doesn't do anything when I click it, and we need that to actually dismiss this. And second of all, I don't like how it's just here right away when we refresh the page. I would like this to animate in. So we're gonna go ahead and tackle that first by jumping back into the customizer. And we need to add just a few lines of CSS here. First, in this banner selector, we're gonna add another rule for transform, and we're gonna do a translate Y and we just need this to be a big value to push it off of the screen. So I'm just gonna do 100 viewport height, and that will actually push it down a, basically 100% of the viewport size. Next, we need to do an animation. So I'm gonna do animation, and we get to name this whatever we want. We'll go ahead and call it banner fade in. We'll make this animation take five seconds, but we're gonna give it a one second delay. So we have 0.5 seconds for the animation time, one second delay. We can do ease in as the timing function. And just to make sure it only happens one time, we'll go ahead and put forwards. Now we actually need to go ahead and write the keyframe animation for this. So I'll just go down here and we'll do at keyframes and we call this banner fade in. So at the very beginning of this animation, 0%, I want to have the transform translate Y 100% or 100 VH excuse me, which is what we had to start out with. Now at 100% of the animation, I actually want to change that transform to translate Y, and we just want it to be zero. So now if we go ahead and publish this, jump out of here again, we'll see it's gonna wait a second, and then this is gonna slide in from the bottom. So that animation is not working. We'll refresh again just so you can see it. And that's working about the way we want it to. We might want to slow that down, but for now, I think that's good. Now, the next thing we want to tackle is actually getting this close button to function. So to do that, we're actually going to need to add some JavaScript to this page. But before that, we need to have some kind of CSS rule that will hide this. So we're going to create a new class called hide me that's just going to change this banner to display none. So one more time, we'll jump back here into the customizer, additional CSS, and we're going to add another class hide hyphen me, and we'll put display none. Now you're not gonna see any changes now because we haven't used this class. We're gonna use JavaScript to add this class to the banner whenever somebody clicks this button. So we'll go ahead and publish that now. While we're at it, we can go ahead and maybe change this to a one second animation. Get rid of that period, hit publish. Take a look at it one more time on the front end. And that slides in nicely. Okay, so now it's to the part of this tutorial where we need to add some JavaScript. Now for me, I use the plugin Code Snippets. I actually have the pro version where I have the ability to add different kinds of snippets, but you can add this code in wherever you like to store your code. We're gonna go ahead and hit add new, and we're gonna call this dismiss banner. We are gonna say this is a JavaScript snippet, and I'm gonna copy this from off screen here so you don't have to see me type out JavaScript. Essentially, all this is doing is looking for the close button and the banner inside the page. And when somebody clicks that close button, it's just gonna add the hide me class to the banner. 
It's all pretty simple JavaScript and it shouldn't affect our load times at all. So we can go ahead and hit save changes and activate and we'll go to the front end of the site. Once our banner animates in, we can click the close button and you can see the banner goes away. The problem we have with this is the banner is going to show up every time somebody loads a new page, which is going to be really annoying for users as they navigate through the site. Once they dismiss this banner, they probably want this banner gone for their entire session. But thankfully, we can edit this JavaScript code with some session storage to be able to save it. Once the user closes that pop-up, it won't show up again. So let's go ahead and head back in here into our snippets. We'll go to all snippets and we'll open this dismiss banner snippet. I'm going to delete this code out of here and I'm going to paste in some new JavaScript. And of course, all this will be available down in a link down in the description of this video. This just changed it a little bit. We're still doing the trick where we're hiding the banner using the hide me class whenever somebody clicks the close button. But this time we're actually setting some session storage to see if this has already been hidden or not. And this will prevent the banner from continuing to load every time the user visits a new page. So we'll go ahead and hit save changes. Now to view this, we're actually going to have to look at this in an incognito window since we've actually already opened the banner and closed it. So we'll paste this in here. We have a brand new session. We should see our pop-up come in here and we can dismiss it. And now when we load an additional page, the pop-up doesn't come back. Of course, we can go ahead and test this with another session. We'll see the banner come in. And if the user visits another page without dismissing it, it will come in again. But as soon as the user dismisses that banner, it will go away and it will stay gone for this entire session. Of course, you're going to want to go ahead and make sure that everything is mobile responsive so that your pop-up banner looks great on tablet as well as mobile. But really, that's just a few extra steps here at the end that I didn't figure was worth showing inside this tutorial. Hopefully you learned something new in this and I'd love to see what you do with it. So if you end up using this on any of your projects, go ahead and leave a link down in the description and I would love to check out and see how you've put this to use. If you'd like to come hang out with us inside the admin bar community, we have over 7,000 web developers sharing all kinds of cool tips and tricks just like this. You can join us by clicking the link down in the description. If you'd like to see some more generate press and generate blocks tutorials, there's a couple videos popping up right here that will show you some other tricks that might be nice to have. We'll catch you in the next one.